right, then welcome. This is going to be a few different oil paintings, I think, but we're going to start with an oil painting that I began on a different live stream. And I'm going to try to finish it this time. So it's going to be a lot of small little detail work and just putting the finishing touches onto this oil painting. That is what uh, is going to be the thing for the start of this stream. So I don't think there's too much to do, but I'm just going to go around the painting and see what kind of uh, things still want to be done. So there's going to be quite a bit of work with the mountain and with the stars, and i uh, just start with the leaves here. So as I said, this oil painting was started in the last live stream, and we began it from the very, very early start, so from the first canvas. And I managed to paint almost all of it in one. And now this time I decided I'm going to take it a bit closer, so I'm going to be moving the camera a bit more around so that we can actually get this, that detail work a bit more, because last time I felt it was quite far away, so even though you can just see everything, it's still just too too far away. And so I think this is better. So while you can't see the entire painting now, at least you can see the details better. And uh, while I paint, so I think that's actually better than to be able to see everything. But that was important for the start. I'm just going to be experimenting with that a bit to move the camera around while I'm painting so we get a better focus. And yeah, so welcome to everyone who's joining. And this is just an intuitive landscape painting, which means that I don't have a plan and I'm just going to go around the painting and see if we can't uh, finish it this time. The way I approach a painting like this is just, as I said in my last stream, is just to start somewhere and then start painting. But at this point, now everything is basically already clear. So I know where everything should be and I know where the leaves should be and and, and so on. And so this work now is very much, uh, it is still somewhat creative, but a lot of it is... Um, work in a way so there there are things that i know i would like to do like these leaves i knew that i wanted to do and now i just have to go through and actually paint them so i still don't actually know exactly how it's going to look but it's a different kind of work than just uh, going around and painting with different colors and so on because everything is clear now in a way the river is there everything is kind of there um, and now it has to be finished. And the finishing is this different kind of process. It's um, it's kind of discovering how it ought to look and trying to get everything onto the same level of detail. So for instance, there are some trees and so on that are just um, dotted here. And I would like the details to be proper and the shadows and everything. So it's just a different process. And I'm just going to experiment to see if that's actually anything that's uh, interesting to look at. It's going to be a lot slower than actually the start of a painting, which is much more a much more vigorous process where you paint a lot and you do a lot of colors into it. And now it's uh, this is more the meditative part, the very calming part, where you just just sit and paint details. These are maple leaves, I think, and I kind of like the way they are going to look. Uh, silhouettes here in front of the night sky. 
so this is a little bit i think this is probably more autumn where the first snow has come but it is a bit how it looks now just without the leaves the snow is on top of the mountains and it's starting to melt here in the lowlands I'm still not entirely sure how to finish this mountain. If it's going to be more glowing snow or more details. Hi from Turkey. Hi to you. It's wonderful that you stopped by from all the way from Turkey. Let's see. So I think that's actually... I'm happy with those trees. The more difficult part, <laughs> you circle the knop, I'm not entirely sure if you say your name, it says, I love Turkey. I have never actually been to Turkey. I really should, at some point, go for a visit. So, a lot of the things that I'm going to do now, it's, it's not as easy as it was in the beginning of the painting. Um, there's there are lots more opportunities now to ruin it, and I'm gonna have to be a bit careful while it's going around. So I think now I'm just gonna try to detail these areas where the snow has melted a bit, and get the details proper so that even if you look very close, it still looks about right. I know a lot of landscape paintings are painted in such a way that it looks very good when you're far away. But when you get closer, you can see that it's the there aren't actually any proper details there. And I do like to, well, I do something like that too, of course, because everyone has to, you can't put in all the details in an actual landscape. I do like the details to be such that you can actually go very close indeed. Very soft and realistic art, Dasein Art Studio says. It's cool, <laughs> thank you. So I might be putting this out on YouTube later, and there, that's the reason why if anyone asks something, and I'm, if I react to anything that's been said, I am going to read it out loud. And yeah, feel free to talk about whatever, or ask me anything. And let's see how this is going to turn out. So I think it is going to look very much like it looks now, just that all the details are going to be a lot more um, painted out. And it might all be a bit lighter. I'm not sure how dark I want it to be. It's always a risk with these nighttime paintings that eventually I paint so much color into it that it's not no longer night and I would like to avoid that. But I would like to still see the details and see the trees and so on, so I'm not entirely sure. Nighttime painting is still quite new to me. Because everything just looks very different. So this is with like everything else, since I'm not looking at a picture, I just have to try to imagine how this would look. And now I'm imagining where, how would the snow melt, for instance. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, so the snow would melt those areas that are exposed to the sun, those areas where the wind blows it away, so it'll always be the tops, and so on. Beautiful, Alexandra says. Thank you, Alexandra. And a lot of happy smileys there <laughs> thank you hi uh, gina says wow it doesn't look like <laughs> it's new to you it's beautiful well thank you i appreciate that well a lot of it is still the same obviously as in just a normal oil painting of mine but the night uh, has its uh, challenges but i think i am going to do quite a bit more of that because it really is um yeah, I just like it. And then I have noticed that since the mountains often have these lines where erosion has set in and so on from the old plates, that the melting will be there too. So I just like to follow some lines sometimes where the snow has melted. 
And yeah, just trying to get a feel for how everything would work. Brush. <laughs> Dasein, what do you mean, Dasein? Well, it is a very tiny brush, if that's what you mean. Although I do have a few that are smaller. I'm going to have to use that one for the stars later, because I would like quite a few more stars here, I think. Though it's always a danger to overdo it. And we did imagine last time that the moon comes from the left here. So I have to keep keep reminding myself of that. That is yet another challenge. Um, I know I talk about this a lot, and it might get very boring, but uh, not painting from a picture thing means that you can have to keep these things in mind. If you paint from a, a photo, obviously everything is just as exactly the way it should be, so you're never confused. But here you just have to keep in mind where the light source comes from. Because suddenly um, you're just putting light in a way that it's not realistic in any way. Of course, I'm not too slavishly keeping to um, those things, but I would like the painting, the, the landscape to be possible, that it could be somewhere. So while it's an imaginary painting, I still don't want it to be a fantasy painting. I still would like all the <laughs> rules of nature, the laws of nature, so <laughs> uh, to be obeyed in a way. So that you can actually imagine being there. And uh, yeah, so I do like to keep those things um, the way that it is possible. So that you have a feeling that, okay, that tree has the same kind of leaves and so on. Because a pure fantasy painting, you could obviously just do whatever you want and put two moons in and so on and have the light source from a very different way. But this is in a way, it's a, it's a naturalistic imagined landscape. Trina says, it already looks like it's from somewhere. Yes, thank you. That's that's what I would like. Alexandra says, that is so symbolic. Keep in mind where the light is coming from. <laughs> that's true. Absolutely. You know, always. <laughs> I like that. Yes, do keep in mind. You know, all aspects of life. So yeah, so we decided last time that the moon comes from the left. So even though you can't see the moon, I'm imagining that there is moonlight coming in from the left side here. And that's what, what gives us the light source. And I think we can make that even more clear into the landscape. So I think I'm going to try to figure some colors there. It looks so easy when you do it, <laughs> but it is not. Yeah, I <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, it is my job, and I do this all the time. So I know what you mean. I remember when I learned, taught myself landscape painting, I would look at how other people painted. I would always get very frustrated when you try it yourself. Excellent. Oh, thank you. All right. So I think I'll try to get some light in here. I have to f keep in mind that this isn't sunlight. It's moonlight. So the light is going to be somewhat different. So a bit more, it's a bit colder, a bit more yellowy. I just have to try and then perhaps remove it if it's um, too extreme. But I would like the moonlight to fall in here from the from the left. I think I'll just start with some light blues. Blue, green, brown <laughs> mixture, let's see. Uh, I'll just have to try it out to see the right color. So I think that actually works. Who are some of your favorite artists? Yeah, yeah, about Nishari. Well, some of my favorite artists are, if you know, well, all of them are old uh, national romantic landscape painters from the 1800s. The one I really love is Caspar David Friedrich, which is quite well known. And then we have some wonderful Norwegian ones, which is Ise Dahl and um, uh, Hans Gude, which is a Norwegian landscape painter who just painted wonderful paintings. And I've been very much inspired by them. But Friedrich just had this mystery in his paintings. I think he was one of the first landscape painters who just painted this... Uh, quite simple landscapes, but with so much mystery and feeling. And that's been a great inspiration. I have looked quite a bit at Chinese landscape painters too, which had very different styles, but painted a lot with, um, they painted imaginary landscapes. And the way I do, 
and uh, just a lot of their philosophy too and how things should work together how the trees should grow together and how we should keep everything in mind how things are placed in the landscape so and uh, the russian landscape painters there was a wonderful one even shiskin i think everyone even if you don't know the name you probably know that painting with the bears in the forest uh, so i have had quite a lot of different um, in uh, the, uh, different painters inspire me and then there are the hudson river school in america which was about the same time and they did some wonderful huge landscape painters that school was called luminism and not for that reason so they painted a lot with light with the sun so while i was learning landscape painting i had a lot of uh, different painters that i just really fell in love with um so yeah, those are the main inspirations. Cute animal stones is walking in the woods. That is nice. So I am assuming that you might be listening more than watching. Or you might be watching while you walk very slowly through the woods. That is lovely. I would assume that spring has started to, to arrive. We can't walk in the woods yet because the snow is still lying about. But very soon, we can start walking in the woods too. So yeah, as you can all see, this is very slow miniature work. Lunar Coven asks, do you prefer Nordic landscapes over tropical ones? If yes, why? And Animal Stone says yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I prefer, it's difficult to say. So I live in Norway. And since I paint from imagination and not from and memories, I always kind of... Uh, my main inspiration that I have is the Nordic landscapes. But I very much like jungle and tropical scapes too. I would say just because I know it better, I probably prefer the Nordic landscapes. And But just the variety in the tropical landscapes. Uh, and I've been in a jungle in Cairns in Australia. And the variety is just overwhelming. And I really love that. So I can't say that I have a extreme preference uh, there are so infinite amount of wonderful wonderful landscapes that i would like to visit and i would love to paint the main thing that stops me is that i really do need to kind of be there and feel it in order to paint it and um, and that's why i always paint um nordic landscapes because that's what's around me so that's just how that happens i would love to paint some more jungles but i really feel like I need to visit more jungles and just stay there for a bit more so I can get that feeling. And deserts. Deserts are wonderful. It doesn't have to be full of trees and, and things. Deserts just have the, has this memory so you can paint a landscape and you can imagine, okay, there used to be a river there a um, hundred years ago and you can paint the dry riverbed. Uh, so one thing I would definitely like to spend... Uh, well, my life on is visiting different landscapes all over the world and learning how to paint them, learning the trees and learning how the environment works. So that's a, a long answer to, to that question, but it is something I think a lot about. What What is it I actually prefer? What would I like to paint? Um, yeah, so the preference isn't as clear. But thankfully, I do love the Nordic landscapes, so I can probably spend a lifetime just doing that. But I would love to visit the old growth forests in all kinds of different countries and see how it how it grows, how it works. I can feel that the authentic experience comes through your painting, so thank you. I appreciate that. I, yeah, I would really like that that feeling that I get when I am in those places and then to get that feeling through. Thank you for the lovely answer. You're very welcome. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. And I very much appreciate the fact that uh, these live streams keep uh, tend to become more of an interaction, which is really wonderful because I can talk while I'm painting, no problem. Come to Denmark, Nordic country, and paint our flat land. What I would love to paint in Denmark is um, Skagen, you know, those areas, the ocean areas. Those wonderful dunes, those grassy hill dunes, 
uh, those I find really lovely, um, and I would like love to paint more of that. So Denmark has beautiful landscapes, um, so that is absolutely possible. <laughs> well, so beautiful. Thank you. So my uh, girlfriend's uh, grandparents live in Sylt, that is in Germany, but it's right at the border of uh, Denmark. And it does have these um, beautiful dunes right up by the ocean. That would be great. Skagen is amazing. Also, you should visit Mönz Klint. I haven't even heard about that, but I assume that might be a different, uh, similar kind of area. Yeah, there are just there's so many places I would like to visit and paint. And I don't think I would have to stay there for a very long time in order to be able to paint it even when I'm here. And then come back every now and then and kind of fill up. We just saw the northern lights a few days ago. And just one experience can sometimes be enough to, to have that feeling in me for a little while at least. Okay, now I think we have the landscape a bit more figured out. There's just, uh, there is a color that is missing. And I think that's a bit of the kind of orangey color. We'll see. If we imagine that there's a kind of an orange, yellowy, cold moonlight, we can always get a few different colors into it too. I get even a bit more highlights. So this is always the danger. If I do too much, it won't be night anymore. But I mean, a moonlight under full moon, it can be really very uh, light. Come to Australia. We have all types of landscapes. Desert, rainforest, mountains, coastal area. Yeah, I actually studied in Australia. I Sadly, I didn't paint at the time. Otherwise, I would have had a lot more um, of Australia in my paintings. I drew a lot. And I did notice that my trees kept becoming Australian trees, which too look incredibly different. I studied in Perth. Uh, but I did visit Cairns, uh, in the jungle in Cairns. That was great. And the barrier reef and the deserts. So definitely, Australia does have a lot. It's just so incredibly far away, <laughs> which is uh, the main problem now. Uh, I do wish I had painted while I was in Australia. I think a lot more of the Australian landscape can come through, and that red desert is uh, wonderful. It feels like you opened up so much this past year. <laughs> was it hard for you to allow the process so you can share your gift? Well, opening up is always difficult. Um... But yeah, there has been a lot of opening up this this year, and it's wonderful. Um, no, especially with Lena's uh, videos, if you're familiar with those, they have helped. And um, now that I actually, um, this is my professional job, it is a lot easier. Because it's just a lot more fun to talk about it. Um, when you're a struggling artist and you're just desperately trying to paint, but it's not actually your job, it's, um, I at least found it more difficult to talk about. But now that I am working with it, it it comes a lot easier. That might not be the right way of doing it. And of course, you should be able to talk about it while you're struggling. But, uh, well, this is easier. I can leave it at that. Okay, let's get some more trees in, I think. Yes, you saw her really touched my heart. Oh, thank you. And then yeah, the, the one Lena did, I suppose. Yeah, I really appreciated that one. And it turned out so wonderful. And a wonderful way of introducing myself to people, too. Okay, let's see here. Let's get those. So I should probably at some point get some light into the trees, but I'm just going to make them dark first. So we'll just get the silhouettes. And then afterwards, uh, some light can come in. So they won't all just be black. Because obviously if we have light coming in from the left, they should be hitting the trees. It should be hitting the trees. I'll just do the silhouettes first. And I don't want to make everything too light. Uh, that seems to be the main difficulty here with light painting, is just keeping it night. And not to cover up the landscape. But I would like to have some more trees in front here and to really get a depth. I really find that uh, trees are a wonderful way of showing 
the depth of the painting. When I watched that video, the insight really sunk in that the process to open up cannot be forced or rushed. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful thing to take away from the video. Yeah, that's very true. It just it has to happen naturally. Sometimes it is important to kind of um, go outside of your comfort zone, but not to force it. It's really awful. If you try to force opening up, it can go horribly wrong. So let's see here. Yeah, so as you can see, I have gone a lot closer with my camera this time. And I will be taking it with me around the painting so that you can actually see the details this time. And here we can paint some shadow back in. That's one thing I do like to imagine here, that we can imagine just giving ourselves a bit of super senses and make the night lighter and more colorful than it would actually be for our eyes. I like how dark the trees are. Looks like there's another mountain to the left blocking the moonlight to get to the trees. Add a lot of magic, I think. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, you could imagine something like that. Definitely. And I think um, there'll be quite a lot more dark trees, especially around here. Oh, I have to keep my hand from from blocking out the... Oh, that's not good. Let us move you guys along. So we'll be over here, and now we can do the trees. And my hand won't uh, mess up the frame, the picture too much. Yeah, I always love those really dark silhouetted trees in that night. You can just see exactly how they work, but all the color is gone. And they get just a very different feeling. And Crossy joined us. You were afraid to miss this live stream, I think. So I'm very glad that you <laughs> caught it. Trina says, hi, Crossy. Yeah, people are starting to know one another now in this stream, which is which is really great. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you you uh, got it. <laughs> Crossy says, yay. I have to keep looking at the screen, too, so that I know if I'm blocking it out too much. Yeah, I think that'll be better. It is very light, so maybe there'll be some, I'll paint some shadows back in afterwards. And the shadows always did more easier to paint when the trees are painted and so on. Now that's the thing, I think this painting actually I could probably just do detail work forever here. At some point, there are going to be have have to be decisions made as to how many details. Uh, so this could take a little while. I thought this was going to be a really quick thing, but now that I'm painting, it often goes like this. I am noticing how much potential work it actually has in it. And of course, you can always just uh, paint on these paintings forever, but I think I can see how wonderful it would be to have a real sharpness to the details, and that means quite a bit of work. And especially these trees that are far, far away. It really is some concentrated work. And with tiny, tiny trees, we can make the mountain bigger, so that you get an idea of the of the size. That's the reason why I would like to go over the mountain a few more times, I think, with uh, lots of details, so that you really get this feeling of a huge, huge mountains, mountain. 
And what I found is if there's lots of tiny little details that really gives that impression. And then, yeah, the foreground is going to be quite a job. So I think I'm just going to be jumping a bit. I'm not going to finish uh, every piece at uh, once. I'm not going to finish this part, for instance, before I then jump to the foreground. I'm just going to be wandering around the painting. That's usually how I paint at this stage. Um, I just keep wandering around and looking, figuring, finding things that uh, need work. And then it all comes together. And uh, what I do find is that once you paint one area, it becomes clear how another area should look. And I think this mountain could be made into a really enormous mountain if we really keep in mind those details. And then the question becomes how many stars should be added. I always like to add lots of stars, but since it's a full moon, I'm imagining. Um, we'll just have to see. Making myself a cup of tea and I'm ready for a long run here. That's very good. I think this could easily be a very long run. My headphones and my phone, it's all charged up. So I think very much that I'm ready for the long haul too. Gonna have to see. I don't think it's going to be on this painting the entire time. I have a new canvas here ready. So we could start a new painting too. And I think that might be fun to start another painting from scratch. Um, but I would like to have this painting well, almost finished at least. Then it's often helpful to put them aside for a bit and then to take a look at it again. <laughs> Trina says, Crassy, I feel you. I just made tea when I received the notification. That's very good. You can find yourself a really cozy spot. Have your tea. Because this is going to take a while. Uh, for the next painting, I have no idea. I'm just going to start with a blank canvas, I think. Um, and see what happens. And I have been painting a bit here outside of the frame. I have to keep in mind that I paint in the area that, we, uh, that you guys can see. So let's see here. Okay, I think we have a reasonable idea of how everything looks here. And then I might move a bit to the foreground, where I have no idea really how it's going to look. So I'm just going to move this a bit. And since the moon now, that wasn't quite clear when I painted this. A nice Sunday afternoon activity for us. Thank you, Joachim. You're very welcome. So yeah, I wasn't entirely uh, sure where the light was coming from while I painted the foreground here. Now that we know that it's coming in from the left, uh, there are going to have to be some color changes. And I think I'm just going to start with the colors, and then the, the foliage, the plants and everything will come in afterwards. <laughs> Trina says, uh, Krasi, I missed the last live, but the first one I attended, I really got addicted. So calming. I'm a therapist, but these lives are therapeutic for me for after a long week starts, before a long week starts again. Well, that's very good. So let's see here. So yeah, the light comes in from the uh, left now. And I'm just going to lay down the lay down the, the shadows and the, and the light here. And then we'll have to see what comes afterwards. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> okay to keep my hand out of the frame. 
So let's see if I have the brushing, I can still get there. So okay, so things like that might be a bit trouble. So I probably can't finish everything because I have to keep in mind that uh, you guys need to see it and it shouldn't be blurred. So yeah, okay, it comes in from the left and I think it would be nice with some highlights some rocks and uh, I would like to have the foreground quite detailed too. But we need to get the light established and then to figure out how to do the river. So I think the foreground is probably going to be one of the most challenging parts, seeing as though it is uh, supposed to be night. And I'm going to do some shadows into this. So this is just going to establish where the light hits. And once that's done, the actual work can start. So I just have to figure out how everything works here. And then down to the down to the river. So the question is going to be if this is is this just mossy or so a lot of these questions are just so gonna I have to ask myself while I paint and try to figure out how it's all going to look. And might want to have some kind of a color into the trees too. And then some plants. And I mean, the plants could be, could have light from the left here. But what I like to do is that the closest plants should um, really be black in the way that that's, uh, that can have a nice uh, contrasting shadow on everything. So if we now move a bit again, we have this, the moonlight coming in from the left. I <laughs> just have to move you guys a bit here. I actually think I'm going to go to the river now. And we can see what can we can do there. Until I do some more of the work in front. I just need to have some idea. I have no idea how the river is going to continue. So I wanted the stars to be reflected there. Um, I think I'll do some very light movement into it and I haven't done a lot of this before so we'll just have to see how it goes good day BRW says you're very welcome here to the live stream where we are painting um, further on the painting that I did the last time, the last live stream. So I think we would like to have this a bit closer to us. So this is kind of a nerve-wracking process now because I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. I just have to paint a bit and see how it goes. One thing might be nice to have some um, shadows of trees into it. BRW has a little smile on your face. That's very good. BRW is one of my most dedicated followers here on this live stream. So yeah. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to be continued, this, this nighttime river. But I'm just going to try to get some movement into it first, and then we can do some stars into it afterwards. And I mean, if it's moonlight, the waves can still be quite clear, uh, I think. So we can have a little the waterfall here. A waterfall might be too extreme, but uh, the water cascades down a bit here. And I 
think even in moonlight, the water reflections can still be quite strong. And I think I'll just move up and do those water reflections. I just have to get some idea of how this river works. Because last time uh, we didn't do much work uh, on the river. And I have never painted a nighttime river before. And as those of you who know me a bit know that I'm not painting from a photo, I just have to figure this out as we go along. So I'm imagining it's coming down and it's kind of hitting some small rapids here. Uh, so quite a calm river, but still I would like some movement into it. And it's quite wide. I would like move, uh, room for the reflection the, of the stars in it. You can imagine that there are some waves at the... Some of these things I have to do just to be able to actually see it properly. And I think the water reflections are probably just going to be all black at night. So from the trees and so on. Uh, Elizabeth waved. I am uh, mentally waving back here. Hello everyone, Gray says. Uh, what a beautiful painting. Thank you. You are uh, very welcome here. It's so amazing and professional. I can't believe you haven't done it before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We'll have to see how it turns out. I hope it's going to be all right. Um, yeah, probably need to spend some nights out. We have a river here close by to see how they actually look at night. And yes, you can see this, yeah, right? So I have uh, put the camera quite a bit closer this time, so you guys can follow a bit more, because all of this, what I'm going to do now, it's basically all going to be tiny little detail work. So at some point, I think we'll go over to starting a new painting. That might be a bit more exciting. But since I promised you that I was going to continue this on the live stream, I thought that I would do that. And so that's the reason why we're starting this live stream with this painting. Because you guys were with me last time. Perhaps one day a pastel painting. Oh, right. With the uh, pastel colors, you mean with the uh, kind of crayons? Or do you mean the kind of colors? BRW says perhaps one day a pastel painting Uh, there are these kinds of uh, pastel crayons uh, that you might mean. But I'm not entirely sure. I think pastel crayons probably do have those neon colors too, which would be wonderful for um, northern lights. On Tuesday is the full moon. Oh, that would work very well for a full for a moon painting then. All oh, good. It's interesting, Elizabeth says. Okay, very good. I am a bit nervous because I, uh, when I do this, uh, it's all a lot more uh, quiet and I'm <laughs> just moving around the painting and there's not much going on. But if you guys can entertain yourself and talk amongst yourselves and so on, I'm hopeful that um, it can be interesting enough to at least keep some of you here. Pastel crayons, Beardle. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, I know quite a lot of artists use those for sketches too. But I haven't um, really used them. But I suppose that can be um, a very nice thing, especially if we do one of these live streams outside at some point. But I usually sketch with oil colors too. So I usually just use oil colors for all kinds of different painting. But perhaps, uh, BRW, I will have to look into that a bit. Okay, we can get some... Watercolor would be nice as well. Yeah, I have to try watercolors at some point. I would have to buy some first. But I can imagine that there are wonderful opportunities with the way that watercolor works and how it sinks into a painting. 
that could be a lot of fun. So yeah, there are definitely lots of opportunities to experiment and try different things. I think watercolor is probably one of the things I would like to try out first. Because it just has different uh, opportunities and different possibilities than, uh, than oil does. Oh, yeah, pastels for the northern lights. I can actually imagine that working out fine. Started painting more with them last summer. Elizabeth says, yeah, I think pastels... Yeah, I think that might actually be a good thing. Okay, so now that we have some movement and color into the painting, I can do some shadows. And the shadows can be explained later. So if I paint a tree or something into the water, I can just add that up here afterwards. And I think that way we can actually get a lot more uh, life into this river. I think it is starting to become a bit clearer how this all is going to work out. I was very nervous once I started this last live stream that I, how on earth I would continue this nighttime river. And now I think we're getting the answer slowly but surely. So this is also one of the reasons for having some more movement into the water, because then you can start to paint the, the shadows here. And I think into those shadows it would be wonderful with stars, for instance. I mean, some of these shadows can just be the hills, and I think I'm not going to do any of the color into them. I just like to have this contrast here. Right, I think it's coming along. Um, you could have a section on your website showcasing photos of your artwork from customers worldwide. We do actually have a section on our Instagram, which is called New Homes, which is in our highlights. And if anyone makes a story of one of our products that they have be, uh, that they have received, uh, we will put it into that highlight. So we have something like that, and we might add that to our website at some point too. That uh, That is a good idea. Uh, so if you check out that new home section, I really enjoy that one. Enjoy your painting now. When you get a farm, you don't have time to paint or sleep. Yeah, I am a bit afraid of that. But uh, my painting is actually um, uh, very much my main source, my only source of money. So I probably have to paint even when we have the farm. The more difficult it is going to be when I have to when I can sleep, I think. But thankfully, we're not actually going to operate a farm in the traditional way. We would like to have some horses, but otherwise, uh, we are not going to be farmers because uh, this is still what I want to be doing. And Lena is going to do her videos, and so hopefully, we can do it in such a way that we can continue doing this. And we kind of have to. This is my. Uh, this is my livelihood. <laughs> I have to keep painting. There's no way around that, thankfully. I always wanted to have to do what I want to do. And that's uh, basically succeeded. So I have to keep painting. There's no much choice involved now. Uh, which is very good. So there's there's, there's no way out. And there is no way to live off a farm. So that's just going to be uh, something extra. Lena will be working on the farm and Joachim will be painting her working the farm. <laughs> it might be something like that. <laughs> yeah, we both have way too many projects and things that we would like to do and fulfill that we can completely lose ourselves in the farm work. That has to be something that we do on the side. Lena is doing the hard work and you paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, painting is 
Well, yeah, that is probably true. Well, she has to do her movies, but a lot of that is uh, filming what we do and what she does around there. So I think that could work very well. But I can't really do farm work and my work at the same time, but Lena can, so we have to see how that works. It will be tempting to paint the horses, BRW says, knowing very well that I don't paint animals. Uh, no, I think Lena would probably like to paint uh, paint the horses at some point, I could imagine. Uh, <laughs> I have lived on a horse farm before, and I did not paint the horses. Um, so I think I will be resisting that particular urge. Open up for volunteer work. Painting is hard work as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and we might very well open up for uh, some volunteer work and to have people on our farm. That is definitely something we will be doing. So maybe at some point we will see some of you guys there. That would be nice. Because that's how we knew it from the farm where we actually met. Was where a lot of people were um, coming to work too. And either volunteering or... Um, um, to uh, against living there or something so there are different ways of doing it where you can have quite a wonderful community there too in some earlier videos i saw you painting during day do you also practice when it's darker or do you have you learned painting night landscapes from pictures uh, so since i'm not uh, i don't paint from any from anything i just have to imagine how this uh, looks it is actually very much daylight now um and uh, I paint uh, very much uh, uh, nightscapes when it's light and uh, uh, and uh, sunny landscapes when it's dark. But it is nice to have the to have the environment around you, of course. Uh, the thing is that I have painted sometimes when it is dark um, and just painted with candles and so on. But then the colors just look wrong. So I have a very strong light next to me while I paint. So I always have about this kind of light here. Painting can be mentally tough. Yes, it can. That is true. <laughs> that is true, especially doing a lot of these um, very intricate details. No, so I have not learned from, um, from photos. I'm just imagining how it will look. And being awake at night helps. I was a uh, so I have been outside a lot in moonlight. So I have some memories of how that looks, especially in the winter. So yeah, now I think uh, some of those shadows that I talked about can come in. A lot of the problem here is that I needed to paint the trees to have a feeling from it. But now I have to paint landscape uh, shadows and colors into the painting while everything is there. I have to try to not paint on top of it. So it's not that easy to know how to continue this now. I think you can do some uh, trees here. That might be something that's nice to do. Let's see here. Uh oh. So finishing these trees in front of here, that might be nice. And I think this line is this one. So all of these trees have to be in the same height as this. And this one should not be standing here at all. We'll have to remove that later. What size canvas do you use for this painting? So this is an 18 times 24 centimeters. So this is a very small one. This is the smallest canvas I paint on. And then I have a few different sizes. Well, I think you're very talented, Grace says. Thank you. I very much appreciate that. And I think I'm just going to be a bit daring here. And we're just going to plant a tree uh, in the middle of everything because I would like to have a contrast. And see here. So this is a bit of a problem too when you paint from imagination, the way I do. Um, sometimes you've painted lots and lots of details. I haven't painted that many in here yet, but then suddenly you wanted to plant a tree and all the hard work is gone. But that's just how it is. <laughs> Which is why I do try to plant the biggest trees even beforehand, but it's not always possible. Could you transfer Lena's photographs onto glass? Well, I know there... Uh, do you mean a, a method or a painting? 
It's a question from BRW. Because I know there are transfer methods of getting photographs onto glass. Uh, it'll always be dotty, um, but I think there are ways of doing it. I have my uh, electricity into this now, so if it bumps a bit, that is the reason. There we are. Forgive me. All right, let's see. The method. Well, as I said, it is for me. I have to sign off again. Thank you very much for these amazing lives, Joachim. Bye, everyone. Hope to catch next slide. Well, bye, Trina. It was wonderful having you here. Oh, the river became so alive. How did this happen? I was watching the whole time. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm not entirely sure what you mean, BRW. If you mean um, painting uh, uh, it on top, uh, well, that kind of happens in a way because I do like to base some of my memories and imaginations on Lena's pictures, but I'm not going to be painting off a photo from her on top of a glass, I don't think. Uh, otherwise, the method of doing it, I don't know how it's done, but I know that firms and stuff uh, do have photos uh, printed onto glass, but that's very different than what I know how to do. Well, I am glad you think that the river came alive, and uh, I think that you're going to do a lot more stars and things and get more life into the river. Especially if I can plant some more trees and so on, and everything should be able to come more alive. You guys can see these, I think, yes. Yeah, I know what you mean, though, uh, Krasi. Uh, sometimes you paint for a while, and then suddenly you realize that it actually worked, and it actually did come more to life. I think there are lots more details that can be done into this. So this is just the first, first um, time uh, painting on the river now. I think there are going to be quite a few more and it's going to come more, become more alive as we go along here. But as I said, at some point, I have to see this kind of detail work is quite taxing after a while. And uh, when I get a bit too tired, I don't stop painting. I then paint something else in a different way. So I have a blank canvas here that we might continue on afterwards. Hi, Colors of the Rainbow. I missed this. Yeah, well, now we have another one. Uh, and uh, continue the one that we did last time. Hi from Argentina. I love your art. Well, thank you, Marley. I very much appreciate that. I don't think I have had anyone, uh, at least not telling me, from Argentina here yet. So it's very good. We keep expanding. How is everyone doing, Gray asks. And where is everyone from? It's amazing to see the process, Crossy says. I like all the stages, but the more you paint, the more amazing it gets. Oh, thank you. Well, that is good that you think so. <laughs> I do know a lot when I learned how to paint. Uh, it was very often that the more I painted, the worse it got. Have to go. Take care. Well, you too, BRW. It was wonderful having you here. And I appreciate uh, you always stopping by for these live streams. And Amuna says hi to Krasi. People are starting to know one another here, which I really appreciate and I really like. Amuna is from Israel. Responding to the question that Gray had from where everyone is from. Yeah, I would be very curious to know where you guys are from too. Obviously, I know some of you, but uh, the ones that are in the chat probably don't. Krasi is from Bulgaria. Alaska is from Japan. Gray is from Netherlands. This is wonderful, very international. <coughs> oh, I am so sorry. Ooh, Japan, says Amuna. Yeah, that is very far away. It's so great to have all of, all people from all over the world. Creative Kunstreise is from Germany. I am sitting in Norway, but I think most of you know that. I always loved an international environment. That's one of the reasons why I went off abroad to study. 
So I always think it's just so much richer when there is a lot of variety and a lot of different people from a lot of different places. I always enjoyed the mood in a more international space. And a lot of these small parochial things kind of disappear. And I often found that people feel a lot freer when things are more international. Because a lot of these small kind of things that we do, the way we have to behave with one another in a country, that kind of eases a bit. Amazing group, Krasi says. Hi all. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I am not doing too well, feeling a bit queasy at the moment. I don't know why, Nimuna says. Well, I hope that this might help a bit and uh, that it can help just being here with all of us. And we're so happy that you joined us. And maybe this can take some of the edge off, hopefully. I know that feeling, sometimes just feeling strange and having no clear idea. But do something calming and, uh, yeah, just uh, spending some time here, hopefully, can help a bit. I can very much um, say that painting helps, but maybe watching painting can help too. So, as I've been saying, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to continue this, but I'm just moving around the painting and seeing what wants to be finished. Elizabeth says hi. So I think what I would like to do is to have some taller trees here too, but that's going to be a bit risky. Just have to see. As I said in the beginning, I uh, ruined a lot of painting. It took me ages to actually finish my first paintings. Because I kept painting on them and painting on them and painting on them. And eventually, um, it didn't look too good. <laughs> but uh, that has gotten better. Yes, these lies are very calming, Imuna says. Thank you. I am so happy. I am so glad that they can have that kind of an effect. Do you and Lena want to visit other countries too in the future, Grace? Says, yeah, definitely. So there are quite a few different countries we would like to visit. At first, we would like to stay a bit more in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so I think one of the first ones is, um, well, obviously Germany, because Lena is uh, from there and her family is there. But uh, we would like to visit uh, Scotland very much, the Scottish Highlands. Watching you boost my inspiration and make me feel... Uh, nice. <laughs> Urge to create something. That is wonderful. Yes, yeah, so the Scottish Highlands uh, would be wonderful. Uh, Imuna says it's gorgeous so far. Thank you. And we would like to visit the Baltic countries. Um, there are some wonderful natural environments, especially in Estonia, for instance. Finland would be cool. I have never actually been into Finland, even though it's not that far away. Um... And, uh, I mean, uh, Poland should have some wonderful uh, environment. I've only visited the more city, in, uh, city areas, so it would be lovely to see the forests there. There are some wonderful old-growth forests still in Poland, too, much more than there is in Germany. Uh, so lots of places we would like to visit. Um, but I think uh, keeping north for the, for the moment, and it would be nice to have places we can actually drive to, uh, there are lots of places I would like to visit again, too. I've been... I really want to visit Finland someday. Yeah, Finland should be really cool. And a bit more of northern Norway. I studied in Tromsø for a while, but I didn't get to see too much of the, of the area. So that'd be nice. Uh, what I would like to do is to visit the old forests of um, a lot of places. So most countries have a few, and not many, but that would be nice. Iceland. Uh, Lena has been to Iceland. I have not, uh, so I would love to see Iceland. And I think the environment there would be wonderful to get some of that into the paintings. Let's see. The Faroe Islands would be cool. Um...
But I mean, every country has interesting attractions to them. But as I said, I think the Baltic states might be very interesting. I know the marshes around Estonia are very interesting. Very different kind of an environment. And then further down the line, I would like to see some jungles again. And I would like to visit China again to see some of those incredible mountains. Uh, and Mongolia, I've been there uh, twice and it's a really incredible landscape. <laughs> that sounds nice, Grace says. Yeah, so I really hope to get some of that. But we have so much time and for now, the most important parts are going to be finding our farm and uh, and discovering the places close to us. So I think that's going to be the priority first. I thought a cool international question would be, what is your favorite food? One of mine is a chai bao. I don't know that one. I really love Chinese food. Ireland is my favorite country, but would love to visit Sweden, Norway. Uh, Kreative Kunstrat says, at the moment, it isn't even possible to travel around in Germany. I miss the mountains and go hiking. Yeah, Ireland would be very interesting. I've never been there. So definitely Ireland would be wonderful to visit too. Okay, so now the question becomes, where off to next? I think maybe a few stars, and then I have to tilt you guys up a bit more. I'm just imagining that you're all living inside my phone right now. So I think maybe a few more stars. A chai is a type of berry. All right. Uh, from from which country? Or culture? Or area? <laughs> You know, so I love Chinese food, but we have I have become vegan this year. Lena has been since she was five. And so I have to rediscover uh, different kinds of foods now. See, I know they have a lot of vegan stuff, but I have to figure, see, rediscover that. Muna, I love food in almost all forms and shapes. It's difficult for me to choose the favorite. So you can make some of the stars a bit stronger. There used to be bears in, in them, <laughs> in their hills. <laughs> well, the bears are starting, I think, to make a slow comeback. <laughs> and maybe here too. I love spaghetti with pesto and salmon. Stroop waffles, a type of cookie from here. Let's see here. Okay, I think a lot of the detail work now. I have to do at some later date. And they have. I have to go a lot closer. So I think at this point, uh, I will take you along to some other paintings, I think. I can widen the screen here. And we can see how it looks right now. And so I think most of it is kind of finished. Um, but there's still some detail works and so on. But I am going to do that at a later date. And I think it might be fun to start with a completely fresh painting. But I did want to take a look at another painting that I have been doing to see if we wanted to paint a bit further on this one. Oops. Or if there is a great wish for me to start a completely fresh one. So either we can continue here. Um, but I think it might actually be interesting to start a new one. So I'm just going to wait for you guys. If you have any suggestions. 
I might have to restart the live stream uh, for a new one, but I'm not entirely sure. I think this is good enough. So yeah, actually, I am going to take this decision away from you guys. And we're going to start a new painting. So let's see if you can get everything proper here. I would like to see one from the very beginning. Very good. Then we are of one mind. This plant has to be a bit further away so it doesn't get completely filled with paint. And now the question becomes what kind of a painting we want. <laughs> yeah, Marley says. Marley. Marley. A new painting. All right. All right, I'm just going to start with the way I usually do. So I usually start with kind of a um, rainbow theme in the way that that's the way the colors in the sky usually work. So we'll see. Um, I just did a night time. We have a yellow one already. I think I'm just going to have to start. And then we can see where it goes. So this is off the way that I like to start a new painting. It's just to start with some colors. And um, the way I choose the colors will be, as I said, from a, in a kind of a rainbow way. So if we have blue here, we'll do the more uh, purple blue on top. We'll have the more greenish blue here. And then we'll do a bit of green into it. And then there'll be the yellows and then the oranges and the reds. So if you look up at the sky, especially at the sunset, you'll see that it's the rainbow um, colors that kind of show you where uh, everything is. So the sun will be kind of a yellow and then around it will be an orange and then the reds will come and then the clouds in front, if they're a bit further away, will have some purple. And so it's often always nice to just keep to the, to the rainbow, at least in the beginning. And just keep that in mind. So I I am looking at the chat and I'm so glad that you guys are chatting with one another. And I'm not going to, I'm only going to repeat the, the things that you guys said if I answer, if, if I respond to it. Because I am going to have to concentrate a bit here. So just feel free to keep chatting. And uh, I'm going to either be a part of it or not according to whatever works best. Right now, there are, there is chat about food. <laughs> See, so, yeah, now we have the purple into the one here, and then we'll do some more um, greenish blue uh, further down, and then go into the yellows. Oh, I missed a part. What's with the night picture? <laughs> so the night picture is now at that point where the details are so small that I have to lean in very, very close and I can't really do that with the camera. So we decided to start uh, fresh. So we're starting on a completely new painting now. <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> I hope that's all right. And so, yeah, we have the... The blue here and then this is going to look very strange in the sky but you'll see that it uh, hopefully that it works afterwards so we'll do some greens and this is to transfer it to the yellow and if you look at the sky you'll often notice that there are actually very much green as um, colors in the sky it's just that you often think that it's blue because that's uh, how you look at it but parts of the, especially when it goes over into the yellows, it will turn very green. <laughs> the night picture was really nice. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Well, <laughs> at least we got to paint on it for a little while. And we'll see how this turns out. And yeah, and so I think we'll do a full-blown sunset rise here um, 
So I never know if it's a sunset or a sunrise, but uh, that people can decide for themselves. Sounding like Endspurt. Yes, exactly. Um, all right, and now let's get the yellows. And then it's going to be nice once we have all of the colors into it. How exactly are you filming this anyway? Like, how is your phone fixated? Arna asks. So I have my phone on a tripod right in front of me. So between me and... Um, you're so quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, between me and, um, and the painting. And that's how I can read your comments at the same time. That is what I tried some days ago, painting a sky, uh, like a rainbow, and put some mountains and tulips in front. It looks very abstract, but I like it. And I see things would uh, I would do different next time. Yes, I really like this, this way of doing it. Uh, and it's incredibly intuitive after a while. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, Arnesis, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it took me a little while to figure out how I could film this. But that's uh, the best way I've come up with, because I only do have my phone. At some point I might get a better setup, but for now this is how I do it. And I've only painted one picture from the start in a live stream before, and that was the night painting. But that worked out very well, so let's see how this goes. And so here you can see the rainbow theme. We'll keep uh, from the yellow, we'll go into the oranges, and then the reds come in. And then at some point the theme will be broken, but there are reasons for that, and I'll go into it once it happens. I find a setup works very well. Well, thank you. I am glad. So here we have the reds, and then we'll do some darker reds, and then eventually the reds will go uh, turn into purple. And then you've kind of gone all the way around. So that's kind of the other end of the spectrum. And then into these rainbow colors, uh, the rainbow will happen again, but in a different way. So when the when the sun comes into it, there'll be another rainbow. So there'll be yellow, and then the oranges, and that'll go around. Um, that'll go from this out from the sun. So if you keep to a rainbow theme, there is a lot you can do in landscape painting without having to think too much, really. And next time you see a night sky, a night sky, <laughs> I'm still by the night painting, a sky, a sunset, keep the rainbow in mind and uh, you'll be surprised on how many different ways you can see the rainbow theme, the different the colors. And now that we've gone around once, so funny the different conversations at the same time. Yeah, I see that there's talk about tomato sauce here. I'm just, <laughs> just going to let it go a bit. <laughs> but I'm very happy that there are conversations going on in the background. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of the point here, isn't it? That we have opened up a little space where people can meet and talk and watch something at the same time. So I am very happy about all the different conversations. All right, and we've actually painted our way through it once, and I'll be adding lots of different colors and so on. And now you can see kind of the idea behind... Uh, setting up a painting because i have no idea what i'm actually going to be painting but this makes it possible to just kind of in an intuitive way just go around the painting and have a background how many hours do you normally paint well that's very different if uh, from day to day to a certain extent but i do kind of treat it um like a job which it is so i paint around eight hours a day i think but uh, it has huge variations, sometimes more, sometimes a lot less, and sometimes a lot more. And now I'm just going to extend the colors, because I think I would like to have a sun here. 
So let's get more of those colors into it. So now we'll just do the rainbow theme again. So if you have orange here from the sun, um, it's going to be yellow into it, and then we'll do a I'll do a white dot in the middle to really get the shine from the sun. Then we can get some of the colors from the sun into the clouds. And Elizabeth wants pasta. I think that's probably the other conversation. <laughs> and so a lot of the work now will be to smooth out the color because there's a lot of color onto this. One of the reasons why this works uh, in one sitting is because I'm painting on a uh, paper canvas. So it is made for oil colors, but it's uh, not a traditional canvas. And so the paint just goes in a lot nicer. <laughs> Crassie apparently had pasta for lunch. And here I often like to put in some movement too. So we get, um, kind of imagine that there are actually clouds in the background of this color scheme. We can see how it works, it turns out. Would you would your work time change if you two were to have your dream fun? Oh, it probably would. I think it would be more that the day would be structured a bit differently. So if we had a farm, I would think that maybe in the morning there would be some farm work and you can start your day like that. Then once you've done a bit, you can then go in and have breakfast and start your other day. And so that just the rhythm will be different. But the thing that we have noticed here that we have a lot of downtime where we're not working or painting or something. Uh, but we have no idea really what to do with that time because there's not that much else really to, to be doing. And so I think uh, there would just be a lot less free time. Um, and I might have to paint uh, more goal-oriented, which has happened anyway now that I uh, do this for a living. So that instead of just sitting down and painting, and painting and painting, you actually know what you're going to be doing and have a plan. And then once you're done, you can uh, do other things. So I think my work time really would change. Uh, not if we had a dream farm, let's say when. <laughs> And we're both very curious about how that's going to look. Because obviously these things often are a lot more work than you often think in the beginning. So we'll just have to see how that works. So now soon we do have to decide what actually to do with this painting. I am... I really have no clear idea where it's going. At the night painting, I had an idea. This time, though, I really, I really don't. <laughs> yeah, when. Very good. Absolutely. We About the farm, we use when, not if. <laughs> Yeah, we hope maybe already this summer we could find it. Because after we had one opening now in the end of May, hopefully we can um, go and find it. So the way I like to do this is that you can now start picking colors from different places and transferring them. So for instance, now I can use this color in the sky and get onto here. So you can get these colors themes going where you just uh, steal color from one part of the painting and transfer it. And that makes everything fit together very well. So you'll have the same kind of colors. And I really like the painting wet in wet, so it's still wet, which means that everything mixes well together. And you have a lot of different options when you paint. So when it, when it dries, there is obviously <clears throat> a lot of different things you can do. But uh, a lot of options do disappear. So that's one of the reasons I started to paint a lot further onto my paintings in one go than I used to. Joachim, you haven't told us your favorite food. <laughs> well, uh, now that I'm vegan, that has changed a bit. 
It used to be more of the Chinese food. Um, now I do have a pasta carbonara, which is not a pasta carbonara, uh, obviously, but it's uh, with uh, substitute meat, which I really like. Um, it's it's just it's changed quite a bit, so it's a bit difficult to uh, truly respond to that. I do like pizza. And we have a pizza margarita we buy from time to time, uh, cheating on our veganism and becoming vegetarians for the day. Um, and that one is really wonderful. So it is, uh, it's changing right now, and I'm not entirely sure. An expensive painting, which only took in 10 minutes, <laughs> the practice it took to become the fire. It makes much more sense to me. Well, <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of the practice is a, is a part of it. I used to uh, spend, uh, it could be like 50 hours on a painting and it still wouldn't be finished. Um, but you'll find, if you want to live uh, off uh, being a landscape painter, you do have to become a lot faster, trying to not sacrifice quality. But, <laughs> yeah, you can't live off painting if you spend 50 hours on one painting. Unless you have just insane prices. And of course there are painters that do. But uh, I hope that mine is still semi-affordable. Where do you get your electricity from? Well, our electricity comes from our wonderful electricity grid. So it's um, we're not that far away. Uh, from, <laughs> so we, do, we, we are not off-grid here. Uh, our electricity comes from uh, water power. So uh, this, commu this commune, I say commune, that's going to sound very wrong. It's just the district. It's just the, um, the district here, and a lot of districts in Norway have dams. So it's uh, water-powered electricity, which means that it gets really expensive in the winter when there's no melting, and then really cheap in the summer when there's a lot of melt water. Um, so that's where our electricity comes from. It's... Uh, Buy a little cable here. Like I would imagine that most electricity comes. So we're nowhere near off grid. So let's see, I think we can get some of this color even a bit further up here. There are going to be some blotches here, and that's just because the color dries. So if you can see that some of these things are being becoming a bit blotchy, that's going to go away again. That's just because the paint is drying. And it's drying unevenly. Uh, so that's nothing to worry about. It's not going to look wonderful, but it's going to go away again soon. So yeah, we had some insane uh, changes in the electricity prices here. Because when you have 20 minus, uh, the electricity plants aren't really working very well. And so the prices get really, really high. And then they go down a lot once all the snow melts. And they are way too much. So last year when we had so much rain and the snow melted, they actually had almost negative electricity prices because they just had to dump it. Because uh, Norway is just very much full of rivers. And you can think what you want. I do. I'm not very ambivalent to the fact of using electricity from the rivers because you do dam the rivers, and that's quite often. But at least it's uh, a somewhat green electricity, except for the nature of damage. Uh, otherwise, Norway just pumps a lot of oil out, but that is sold to other countries. <laughs> so a complicated answer to a very easy question, I suppose. Right. Let's get some. Um, how far do you live from shore stores? Uh, Twenty minutes, about from the closest store. So we're not really in the middle of nowhere here. We're actually in quite a touristy area, but we're quite far up the mountain. I really love those thin clouds on the painting. I was always tend to admire the daily sky. Such a great creation every day. Absolutely. Absolutely, I do love the. The sun rises and now the colors play in the sky. So I am just looking for my purple here. And I'm not finding it. I'm not going to find it very soon. And 
guess I have to try to mix my own. Oh, there we are. So you can mix most colors with just a few, but you always get different ones. So I do like to have a lot of different um, colors already prepared here. And at some point now, very soon, we have to figure out what kind of a landscape should go into this painting. Where do you get your painting materials? Oh, so a lot of different places. Um, but there is an artists uh, collective in Oslo, in the main city, where a lot of artists went together a long time ago and created their own store. And that's where I get a lot of the paint. Um, some of them I have gotten from other artists who one, for instance, got allergic to his oil colors. So I got uh, quite a bit from there. But yeah, I buy them from an art store. There aren't that many in Oslo, really. So you buy them, buy them online, and then they're shipped here. And I use all kinds of different brands. I have a few that I really love, but um, <clears throat> I have paints from so many different years, so it's just really <laughs> a mess at the moment. All right, and now for the sun, we'll just do a white dot uh, at first. And we know where it is and how it looks. And then we can... But it has to dry a bit before I can do much more there. So we'll just do a little white dot here first. And we have an idea where it's going to be. And now a lot of this has to dry. But uh, we can still do the landscape. And we can use the colors. So the sky isn't finished in any way, shape or form. It's just begun. But now we can paint a landscape into it. Does anyone have any ideas? I am trying to figure out what would be nice. But I think trees in front, especially if it's a strong sky, it's nice with some silhouettes here, I think. Have you thought about doing painting workshops? I have at some point. And this is great practice. <laughs> Uh, that I think that would be online um, at some point. Yeah, sure. So now trying to figure out, I would like to keep this really dark color here. So I think I'll just do some greens in front and we can get some idea uh, of the landscape. So for those of you who don't know, I am just painting from imagination here. I'm thinking about desert dunes. Oh, that now suddenly took a different turn. <laughs> I mean, wow, it's been a long time since I've been in a desert. I have been in a few desert dunes. All right, well, desert dunes. That will be a bit sandy color and the shadows of orange sand will be purple, which works well because that's the color we have there. So the shadows are already done in a way. All right, you know, I'm just going to follow that suggestion. I haven't done a desert landscape in a while. Um, there are very few deserts in Norway, you'd be shocked to hear. S but I have uh, done it. You're thinking about the, the sea. Well, I, it's going to be difficult to fit in both, but we'll see. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sempa. How are we today? In which deserts have you been in? <laughs> I have been in the Australian desert and I have been in the Mongolian desert. So in the Gobi desert. So let's see here. Yeah, let's do some dunes and we'll see how this works. So we'll do the far off dunes first. <laughs> Honestly, Elizabeth says, yeah, no, there really are few deserts in Norway. Very honestly. Um, I was quite shocked to see that there are actually some deserty areas in quite Nordic countries, but Norway is not one of them. And at the coastline, obviously, you have some sandbanks and so on. Mm. But uh, yeah, and the Gobi Desert uh, was very much a proper desert. So it's about time to go to bed while you're in Japan. Yeah, I would imagine. That's a lot of travel. Some places, yes, I have traveled quite a bit. And uh, so I have seen quite a few different areas, but it's such a long time ago. Goodbye to you, Alaska. Uh, I hope to see you again.
at some point in the live streams. It was good to have you here and have a good night's sleep. I mean that you are now painting them, really. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I love the desert trees. And, um... <laughs> oh, you were surprised, were surprised that I followed your idea. Well, I haven't done anything like that in a while. And I am getting a bit stuck in painting the same things over and over. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um... I uh, no, I think it's fun to uh, listen to your your suggestions and actually follow them. That uh, gets me a bit out of my rut here a bit, and so definitely I will be following the things that you guys um, are suggesting. So we are actually going to do a desert, but I think a desert with a little hill so that we can break this a bit, and then we can have a very old gnarly tree here. Have to wait for the sky to to uh, dry a bit more but I think we'll have a huge open desert landscape in front and then we'll do a little hill here with some details and then a tree an old uh, dry tree that goes into the into the sky so I shouldn't be painting here too much if that's going to disappear anyway you yeah, know I love suggestions <laughs> uh, I don't think I can fit the ocean in because the desert just came first so you guys have to be quick <laughs> awesome <laughs> can't imagine it so well very good so that's what we're going to do so I'm just going to do a very dark um, blue, black, blue color in here first that's not going to be the color in the end but I just need the contrast so that I know where where it's going to be So I think like a, a hill top that's gonna go out like this and we'll plant the tree on top here. I do another one here so that I know where it is because it's a shame to paint too much and then just covering it up in the end. So yeah, there we have our little hill and then we'll have the desert here. But now that I am looking at it, um, I might do a little hill here too, just so we have, um, so we frame the painting. A fun fact I learned a few years ago is that the biggest desert is Antarctica. Yes, deserts are actually defined by rainfall. Yes, that is true. I have learned that a while back too. Uh, that is very true. So I could have just done a white desert here. And I think that might be fun at some point too. Especially here in Norway, above the tree limit. It very much looks like that. There is just a white desert. But I think here we are going to do a warm desert. Hi, Rahel. You managed to stop by too. That's very nice. So we already painted our uh, the nighttime painting. I can just... Uh, that's the one we started with now. But I uh, came about as far as I can on a live stream. And so we started a new one. And this one was done from scratch, just like the last painting. Uh, and so we we're painting on this one. And Elizabeth had the idea that it should be a desert painting. And I followed that idea. And so here we are. So this is the first desert that I have done in a long time. And I think I haven't done an oil painting, a desert oil painting before at all, actually. So I'm probably not going to finish this uh, this time. And I'm going to have to, I think I have to look at some desert documentaries. Because as I don't paint from, I don't paint from pictures, but I need some inspiration. And I need to figure out a bit how this is all going to look. We could have a dry riverbed here. And some scattered trees. Um, yeah, so that's how this is going to look. And then just have this uh, sandy color in. And the stone here could be some kind of a sandstone. And as I said, I'm going to be planting a tree here, but that's going to come later because I would like to continue the sky a bit more. Now that we know how the the landscape is going to be, we can continue with the sky. 
What is the craziest thing you have ever painted? Well, <laughs> I am kind of a traditional landscape painter, although I paint from imagination, which is a bit different. And I don't go in for very crazy things. Um, but there have been times, I suppose. Uh, I, well, I have painted crazy. Well, it's probably nothing that's really actually deserves the word crazy. I have a I think the craziest thing that I ever painted was probably in my rented apartment. It was very important that this was rented, not mine. I decided to, I had huge, uh, very tall um, room, a three, three meter up to the ceiling. And I painted a very big forest on my entire wall with a ladder uh, and trees that were two or three meters tall on my entire wall in my dorm room, basically. And I think that might have been the craziest. Wow, the night painting turned out so beautiful. Thank you. What a great idea, Elizabeth, Rahel says. It's been a while also, Rahel. Yes, senpai is saying hello. What a great question, <laughs> Elizabeth says. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this is all Elizabeth's doing. So we are now painting a desert painting because Elizabeth came up with the idea and I really like it and it actually fits well with this red sky and maybe we'll do the sun more in the you know the desert sun sometimes you just see this huge orange disc and I'm, well, maybe I'll just paint that in here and we'll see how that looks so instead of just having a, a white sun it might be fun to not have a white sun but have this uh, this uh, red sun into it instead and uh, I think you all know these kind of time lapses or so from Africa, where you just have this enormous red sun. And maybe something like that. Hello, Cressy and Jack, little Rahel says. Yeah, you guys all know each other now, which is wonderful. So I think maybe something like this. And then... The color of that sun could be reflected in the clouds around it. So I don't think we're going to, maybe, probably not going to get as far as we did with the nighttime painting. Because I have used a lot of paint here and it's not all going to dry. But we'll see how far, I would like to plant that tree at the very least. But the sky has to be a bit more done before I can actually do that. And as you can, you can probably start seeing that now, that it's drying and it's making these blotches. And as I said earlier, they are going to go away again. That always makes it a bit difficult because I can't exactly know how it turns out before that is dried. And the trouble with painting in a tree is that it's going to be difficult to keep going with the sky afterwards. Not impossible, but we'll see. What I'm doing now is basically just hiding my brush strokes and trying to get everything a bit smoother into into each other and then details can come on top of that again afterwards. maybe the desert landscape will dry quick enough that we can start on some detail work to see. By the way, how is Ivy doing? Ivy is our dog and Ivy is doing very well. 
he is getting a bit stressed there <laughs> at the moment because now that spring is coming, the foxes are starting to yell. And if you guys, if you don't know, you should definitely just Google fox sounds. Uh, it sounds rather ex extreme. And uh, he reacts very, <laughs> very much to it when he can hear the foxes. Uh, so yeah, he has his own different things that he is uh, thinks are important, and that's one of them. Um, he sleeps around a lot, and we are very much looking forward to having him get a farm too. So once we get a farm, that's very much for him as well, because he really loves just running around and watching everything. And here now, he isn't that much outside because he can't really be outside alone because he would just run away. He doesn't really just run. I mean, if we look at it, <coughs> if we look after him, he can be free, no problem. But if he does spot something and he starts running after it, he can get kind of lost. The door did open in a little boom spring storm here and it closed after him. And he must have been out for quite a while because at some point we just heard someone trying to bash our door in and I got quite scared I figured what what is that and it turned out that Ivy had gotten out and he couldn't get back in <laughs> so he doesn't really run away but we have to watch him fox sounds can be very scary I really enjoyed Lena's video last weekend it was nice to catch up with her senpai says yeah they really can and I appreciate that uh, that you watched Lena's video I think it turned out really nice um And yeah, she wants to start working on a spring video. But for that to happen, we actually need a bit more spring. Because we have a lot of snow here still. And the temperatures have gotten a bit colder again. And so the snow is just staying. Well... As much as I like the idea with the orange sun, I think I would actually like it to be lighter. So I will go back and uh, plop in um, a more ordinary kind of sun here. And maybe we can make it shine a bit. Elizabeth, uh, it was beautiful video. I loved how much your eyes were shining. Oh yeah, that's wonderful to you. <laughs> I will tell her. I remember Kali commented on the snow versus ski <laughs> with the ski incident. Was the snow a bit too soft and deep? Yeah, oh, definitely. So uh, there hadn't really been much um, melting and cooling so that there wasn't really a crust on the snow and there was uh, one and a half meters of snow. And so the second I went into it, I just sank right through it and I couldn't get out again. So that's what Lena kindly decided to uh, <laughs> have as a part of a video, was my little excursion into the snow there. And it was just impossible. It was like quicksand. Everything just... Because uh, skis are wonderful, but they don't always do the what they're supposed to do. And sometimes it just it's not possible. And notice the ice, too. Very blue. <laughs> So yeah, let's get um, that white sun in again. Because I think it could be nice with some really shiny sun here. So this is the more traditional way that I make the sun. And since we're experimenting with the desert anyway, we don't have to experiment with everything. So this I know a bit better. And so I think we'll do one of those suns. So it is a shame that it's not drier, but I don't think I can do much more work here. Well, while I'm saying that, I am 
thinking that we can do some clouds on top of that. Let's try it. So here we do the rainbow theme, but in a very different way. So I imagine that these clouds are the furthest away. So they are going to have more of the color of the top. Uh, I'm going to put those on top of the purple clouds and to get to get more of a three-dimensional view of them. Let's see how that works. So we can have them. Happy eyes, felt the joy with her. Okay, let's see. Let's uh, hopefully this isn't going to ruin the painting. That's the risky part for doing this live because a lot of the things that I do on paintings are um, intuitive and sometimes they just <clears throat> it just goes completely the wrong way and you just have to remove it all again. But let's see if this works. And now that the, these clouds are on top, we can have them a bit more detailed. So I don't think I want just these soft bands of clouds. I would like to have some clouds with some texture in here too. And uh, these kinds of clouds, it's nice to do while it's uh, quite wet too, because you can get the color in of the background. So while it is a bit more difficult <clears throat> for anyone who has painted with oil, while you paint uh, wet on wet, you just have a lot more options. So it is a wonderful thing to do. So that basically just means that you don't wait until it dries. You just keep painting like I'm doing now. And then I have to see if I can actually get my hand in here without it. <laughs> this is a bit more difficult. I don't usually paint with my hand in this position. But since I would like you guys to see it, I'll just have to do that. if these clouds kind of drift in from the sides and the darker the clouds can be the more the sun will shine looks amazing very realistic i find <laughs> like i remember from flying oh yeah i do miss flying i have to say and here i'll have to do it a bit more properly and make sure that nothing is ruined and purple and orange doesn't always look too good so I actually have to switch to more red I think so here we have the rainbow theme again so blue the furthest away and then the closer we come to the Sun the more red it becomes and just keep remembering the rainbow. Yeah, I always like when it can start to be a bit more realistic and you can get that texture in. With well, the video is all good. It took me a while for some as I didn't like how I sounded. I forgot to show something. They were all very close. It was still a nice walk. Lots of tourists though. Yeah, the videos you sent me were great. I'd like more of those. I haven't watched everyone. Um, but they were really helpful, and uh, <clears throat> especially that vine that you sent me to in the photos as well was great. Senpai has uh, assisted me with my little research of new leaves, and I very much appreciate it. When and where did you fly last time? <laughs> Thanks for the explanation. <laughs> uh, so the last time I flew, let's see, that has to be, it's actually quite a while ago now. Um probably was to Germany um, but it's uh, it's been ages now I used to fly a lot and I know environmentally that's not brilliant but especially when I studied abroad I flew around quite a bit um, I am not entirely sure when the last time was 
It might have been to Germany or it might have been, I went to China f- a few years ago. So, gee, yeah, it's quite a long time ago since I flew last. But that might have been the last time. Um, and that was wonderful because there was so many wonderful things to see on the way. So the flight to Germany isn't that exciting, but the flight to China was wonderful. And I think we flew over Kazakhstan at some point and it was brilliant. And when I studied in Australia, obviously, I flew a lot. And uh, that's a wonderful flight, too. Are there other artists that inspire you? So I'm not sure if you were there when I answered the question the last time, but I'll be happy to answer that again. So the most inspiring artists are all dead (laughs) to me. Uh, So the ones I really love are the old um, National Romantic painters. So Kaspar David Friedrich is one of my absolute favorites. And and then there are Norwegian ones, which is Ise Dahl and uh, Hans Gude. Uh, there are the Hudson River School of the Americans, which uh, are wonderful painters. And there are quite a lot of Russian masters that did wonderful work, especially even Shiskin. So, yeah, I have quite a lot of uh, painters that have really inspired me. And I really love those old uh, painters. That was about the time that uh, the Europeans started to actually appreciate pure landscape painting. Uh, But the Chinese landscape painters, I don't have any names right now for which ones. But they did wonderful work. And in China... They actually appreciated landscape paintings above other forms of painting, which is completely the opposite of what we did in Europe, where landscape painting wasn't really looked upon as a great art at all for uh, the most parts of our history. But there, actually, it was, and they painted from imagination too. And so the old Chinese masters are wonderful. But... Coming back to it, I think it uh, it's Kaspar David Friedrich is my absolute favorite. I was at an exhibition with uh, from Kaspar David Friedrich here a few years ago, and it was wonderful to see them in person. Very small paintings, actually. So a lot of the landscape painters uh, painted enormous works, but he painted very much uh, sizes uh, like this. And they had... So a lot of his night paintings set up in a dark room. Uh, it was really magical because he had such magic in his paintings. And if you don't know him, I urge you to go online and uh, Google him. Kaspar David Friedrich. He just painted uh, incredible paintings. Such uh, an incredible strong mood in them. So while he was very skilled, he didn't uh, have to do as many details as many of the other landscape painters to still create this incredible mood. All right, I think we have quite a bit more now. How it's going to look. And I think we can get some... Thank you, I will. It's great. Yes, please do. Uh, Kaspar David Friedrich. And you'll probably see quite quickly why I really, why I love him. And quite a bit of the way he painted comes into my paintings too. So I think we'll do some of the light here. I like that, to have like a little strip of light. I don't think I'm going to do rays, but uh, just to have the light of the sun. I think since this is going to be a desert, we can just have this strong mood here, kind of a... It's always important not to make it look too kitsch, but I 
really like these uh, strong colors and and so on. And I think the second we paint in a very old gnarled tree, a lot of that uh, kitschness is going to go away. Your clouds look similar to ones, uh, some of his paintings. Yes, they probably do. I think a lot of European artists were a bit like sheep of following each other. <laughs> to Google Friedrich, and I certainly see why you like him. Yeah, they definitely were. I mean, that happens a lot in art anyway. That someone does really wonderful work and then others uh, see it and try to copy it. But Friedrich really was uh, his own character. And very much did his own kind of thing. It's probably a reason why he didn't get as rich as the others did. <laughs> but uh, I just really love his work. He actually painted quite a bit. He's a German uh, landscape painter uh, from the 18-somethings. But he actually painted quite a bit in Norway. Uh, he was a very good friend of Isa Dahl, which is a Norwegian landscape painter. And so Friedrich actually spent time in Norway and uh, painted uh, the highlands here. And so I think here we can get some movement into the clouds. I don't know if that's just a Welsh phrase. Do your people <laughs> say someone's a sheep if they don't think for themselves? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, we do. Follow someone like sheep. Yeah, absolutely. And I have lived long enough around sheep to know that that's exactly how they behave. Sheeps are, sheep are wonderful, but it can be incredibly annoying to suddenly have a hundred sheep following you for no reason at all than that one sheep thought you had food. In German, we say so too, Elizabeth says. Never heard it much anywhere else. Um, I'm trying to figure, let's think if as we say it in Norwegian. No, I think I know it more from English, actually. Yeah, wie schafe. In German, absolutely. Now we could probably put in that tree. It's always very um, exciting and quite scary because you can't undo it unless you waited for a few weeks. Um, and we're not going to do that. There are many sheep in the world, though. <laughs> Hope for some good shape. All right, let's see here. Shepherds as well. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. But hopefully we can free those sheep so that we don't need the shepherds. Because it would be a shame uh, to have too many shepherds in a world full of sheep. Let's free the sheep. And I know we all have probably have a sheep in us. It's always quite um, tempting to just follow. Okay, so now we'll do... <clears throat> A desert tree. So this is probably just going to be an invention. Uh, but I know some kind of shapes for desert trees. So I'm just going to follow that. All right, let's see now. Planted right on top here. There are probably going to be more than just one tree, but this is going to be the dominating one. With lots and lots and lots of very fine lines.
actually, now we might go closer. So you guys can follow along a bit more. Let's ah this tripod. There we are. Yes, as for European artists. In some periods everyone was painting nude woman, others everyone sculpting, etc. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of that. Especially because a lot of art uh, in Europe and a lot of places in the world has been art for the rich people. So it's not really about artistic expression. Uh, there wasn't too much space for that. They painted uh, to decorate the great halls of Europe, of the kings. And so uh, there wasn't that much um, possibility to really do other things. Um, so really a lot of the things that we see uh, as art in those times was really what the rich people wanted to see. And of course, a lot of the portraits are just from of those. Of we have almost no portraits of farmers, for instance, or the normal people. I have worked as a shepherd for a while. Oh, that's pretty cool. But I still own two border collies. Yeah, that probably helps. I should probably know a bit more of our art history. I haven't... I don't know too much. I should probably go back and do some more of that. I only know a bit of the landscape painting tradition and a bit of why they painted the way they did. But I think that's one of the reasons why there was such a flare-up and a, almost a disgust for the traditional ways of painting. It's just that a lot of the art was incredibly stuck before and there was just a need to kind of break all of these boundaries but i do hope that we are broken enough of those that it's allowed to do some traditional landscape painting <laughs> again i know that a lot of people in art schools haven't been allowed to actually paint for ages now the only time normal people would be in paintings would be peasants in an unflattering light oh yeah the, the stereotypical stupid peasant to make the rich people feel better. Definitely. And then at some point in Holland, I think they started with Rembrandt and so on. Oh, like commission work. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the rich get something cool, the others want it as well. <laughs> no, that's not to mean. That's very true. Yeah, trends kind of work a bit like that. Um, what what kind of sells what works so it's amazing how many people painted in the style of Picasso after Picasso question is going to be if this is going to have any leaves at all. I'm not sure. And I don't think the desert trees really have too much moss on them. See, this is the problem of not actually having been in a desert in such a long time. I really am not entirely sure what I'm doing here. I seem to remember these trees with just a lot of, a lot of branches that have fallen off. Oomph, <laughs> Elizabeth says. <laughs> Yeah, well, art history is, um, can be wonderful, and it can be incredibly unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, it is a complex topic. And a lot of different opinions. And I know in China, <clears throat> they had a lot of replication, because every painter basically had to spend 
years and years and years simply copying the old masters before they were even allowed to try something else. So they have an incredible amount of continuity in their art, which kind of happens if you do it like that. Good trends, though, would be something does something good and inspires others to do it. That's why following is not so bad as long as you have someone good to follow. That is true, too. Uh, so it doesn't have to be an awful thing. A wonderful thing about that can be that you can continue the work that someone else started to do. Which is a bit how I think about... Uh, obviously, Kaspar David Friedrich painted very different than I do because he painted from actual landscapes and made sketch sketches and so on and painted humans in. But that it can be a continu continuation of uh, someone else's work because we are all connected. And that is a wonderful way of seeing it, I think. Instead of knockoffs of each other, it's a, it's a joint-up work. And uh, we're all learning from one another, that's kind of how our story works. So that is nice. Art is like a mirror of society, it seems. <laughs> yeah, that is true. See, I think a lot of this is just going to be a lot of broken off old branches. So if you imagine that this tree in the middle of the desert dries out a lot and keeps losing branches and tries again. So I don't want it to be too vibrant, this tree, because it's, uh, it has a hard life. And I think we should be able to see that in it. So these broken branches, it's kind of a testament to how life has been. Joachim, why did you paint the rocks dark? Has this also to do with color shading light? Yeah, that is just really to get the contrast first. So I'm going to do colors and do other things here eventually. It's more just to get the contrast. And then I can paint light, lighter things on top. And then that will come out. So you can see it better. So I will often start with a very dark color. And then sometimes that almost completely disappears. But it is to get that contrast. So I don't think the rocks here are going to be dark. I think they're going to be a bit more desert color and maybe a few kind of greens into it. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just how it is going to be now in the beginning, just so I can get that contrast. I think it would be nice to have some uh, kind of a sandstone feel to the rock here and then just some very sparse uh, vegetation. And I have to look up some desert plants because I have no idea. And then I think it would be wonderful to have, as I said earlier, um, a dried out riverbed in the landscape. Elizabeth says, uh, learning a lot here too. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, it's a, it's a good little place here now. We can all exchange some information. It's wonderful. I am learning myself. Some exhibits were periodic and the paintings very similar, Sepai says. It's going to be interesting to see what turn the art world makes after this period. I am sure we will see a lot of this time in in art. But I, as you can probably guess, I don't look too much at contemporary art. Um, 
but it would be nice to see. I know a lot of hobby artists paint landscapes like this, but the professionals almost never do. So the art world to me is um, a bit of a mystery because it's very different than the thing that I do. So I think you'll be hard pressed to see a modern art exhibition with paintings like this. But maybe I can introduce that at some point. I agree, in books, COVID is very present already. Yeah, it's starting. I have noticed that. Uh, that it is starting to creep in. It always takes a little bit for the culture to keep up with the times, but it is starting to come in. I think that's going to be a big part of just processing what we've all just all been through. I think that's a very big part of uh, the arts too, is just actually processing. Because I think we're probably all stuck a bit with the feeling of what on earth were we just, did we just go through? But of course, in my paintings, that's probably not going to be very present. But what I would like to do is just to heighten the appreciation of the natural world a bit more. And I think that does fit into our time because we need more of that. At the moment when we are destroying it all. That is another reason why I like to just paint the landscape without anything in it so that we can get a bit more of that appreciation just how beautiful and wonderful it is without any function it doesn't have to be there for anyone or anything Certain names get lots of attention, which drastically increases popularity, Senpai says. Earlier you said Picasso, and I think Pollock paintings are slightly overrated. <laughs> In my own opinion, everyone is allowed their own. That is very true. Yeah, things do get... Uh, I mean, the art world is quite an in insane place. Um, I think a lot of us mortals uh, don't really understand what's going on there a lot of the time. And the fact that people buy art as an investment, just kind of screws it up a bit more. But that is a wonderful thing about the internet now, not having to have galleries. I have found that having an internet store is a really wonderful thing because you can just do it a bit uh, differently, really. And I often do look at what I do a bit more as an audition, artisan thing because it is kind of a skill. It's not as much a the concept art. All right, I think we have that tree for now. And then the question is going to be how this riverbed is going to be. <laughs> I agree, I don't understand the hype a lot of the famous artists. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say too much to it, but it's um, it can be quite difficult to understand sometimes. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get this riverbed going. So if we imagine that it's starting from here, so I'm not actually going to do a river. Um, it's going to be a dried out riverbed, I think. But that means that we uh, would be able to see where it ran a long time ago, or maybe it runs there every time that there's a lot of a lot of rain. Um, and then it comes through, and so we can do some trees there. And maybe it shouldn't go in that direction. Maybe it should go here, because we have a mountain there. We can have the dried-out riverbed along here. I'm just going to use black now, just to have um, an idea of where it's going to be. Joachim, did you mean, like, it's a lot about technique and innovation versus uh, beauty? Uh, do you mean what I do? No, I mean the fact that um, it's not so much about a concept. I know a lot. Uh, the way a lot of artists work these days is that you have an idea behind it. 
So for instance, you could say that I had an idea of um, how, well, it's difficult to say, I'm not, I don't want to tread on too many toes here. And it's a good thing. I mean, concept art can be wonderful. But for instance, just in the extreme part, you just you want to paint about climate change, for instance, and you have an idea, and then you want to show that in your art. Whilst the, you see the way I do it, I just start painting. So I don't actually have a concept behind it. There's not an abstract idea behind the things that I do. And that's what I mean. So I'm much more focused on the beauty aspect or the, the, the feeling of it, as opposed to the idea. And uh, as you can often see with a lot of art, and I don't think it's treading on too many toes saying that, is that you often you don't really understand entirely what's going on until you um, learn about what was going on in the artist's mind. And that's not true for what I do at all. So I think that's that's a big difference. And often in the art world, just painting something that looks nice is uh, not looked that very friendly. <laughs> So we have the riverbed, and now I'm just trying to highlight the sand dunes a bit here. Uh, yes, Elizabeth, uh, <coughs> the famous hyped artist. Yeah, it's about the concept. Yeah, as far as I understand, that is uh, the main part of a lot of art now. <coughs> Ralph says, totally agree with what you say about following your feelings, not only in art, but also in life. Yeah, I like that idea, that uh, you don't have to always be in the logical mind and think your way to these things. It, it can be nice to just follow your instincts and your feelings. And I like that aspect of, uh, of painting. And uh, this concept is, it can be powerful, incredibly uh, important and inspiring, and you can um, paint a concept art of the ravages of the Syrian war or something. And all of these things are very important. Um, it's just not what I do. It's not about something external and a part of the painting. Apart from... All right... So now the difficulty is going to be how to continue this. That's also the reason why I'm just trying to paint some lines here and try to figure out how the landscape works. Because I'm not entirely sure how we're going to continue it. So we have the sand dunes, and then we have the river. Um, hmm. I can paint some highlights in the sky and the clouds, maybe first. Understood, Elizabeth says. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right. Let's get some, a little bit of color into those uh, skies here. And I think maybe I'll have to take a little break. Um... I have no idea how long this live stream has been going for now, but it must be a few, maybe two hours or something. If anyone was here at the beginning. I agree with both of you, Rahel, and you are can follow heart and gut. <laughs> I have to go, Gray says. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye to you, Gray. It was very wonderful to have you here, and I hope to see you again soon. Wow, sorry, he says. Thank you. Let's see. I thought maybe to have some colors in the clouds, even though I kind of like it like this, so that's a bit of a risk. 
Hi, Gray. Really liked your questions. Yes, me too. Thank you, Gray. It's good to have you here. It's good to have uh, that you were so much uh, a part of this. It was wonderful. I have no idea how long Krasi says. Yeah, you were here quite early on, Krasi, so you should probably... Um, you're probably one of the earliest, earliest here. So I think these highlights... Yeah, I think they actually work. Time flies for me. <laughs> Nor do I, Simpa says. I managed to miss the start of the stream, sadly. Yeah, well, you can see it again. I'm going to upload this on YouTube. Um, but of course, that's not the same as actually, because especially the chat here, of course, is not the same. Yeah, I think these highlights actually are good. That gives a bit more life to the painting. And makes the sun shine a bit more. Well, I mean, it must be about two or three hours now. We've painted almost... Uh, we've done an entire painting from scratch here. I painted the finishing touches on a nighttime painting. I mean, at some point we'll do an entire day, <laughs> but for now, I would obviously have some more paintings to do. Let's see here. I think actually it is dinner time soon here. Oh yeah, I like this. So as you can see, a lot of this is just intuitive and trying to see what works. And um, this was just a, a, a try. And since I like it, we can continue it for a bit. Just to make some highlights around the clouds. And they can stand out a bit more. Thank you, Elizabeth, for this idea with the desert and so on. I think that was really wonderful. I think that works here. <laughs> so, Bess, how have we got to say thank you for reinvigorating my liking for art? Let's say my first art teacher at school did not boost my passion. Yet that can happen. <laughs> and a heart. Thank you from Ayit Kumar. Thank you. Yeah, our teachers can be wonderful or they can be uh, quite dreadful for your passion. My pleasure, Elizabeth says. Yes, thank you. It was really good. And I'm really looking forward to this. I am going to look at some documentaries of deserts just to have some more ideas and just a feeling. I have some, I can remember those dried out riverbeds, but I just need to get into it a bit more to have some idea of how it's going to progress. And I think we can have some light into the clouds all the way in front here. Oh, I think that actually turned out nice. It was a shame. It wasn't her cup of tea. It wasn't a good piece. Thanks, Krasi. <laughs> oh, if it wasn't her... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our teachers like that. I think our teachers really just should be there to further the passion for whatever the students do. And if art becomes too heady, let's say, it, it really can suffer. It just becomes strange. Trying to explain something that really should be about feelings can go horribly wrong. All these very odd theories. No, that is probably a very British phrase. <laughs> that is a very British phrase, the <laughs> cup of tea. We can understand it. There are so many British uh, TV shows and so on that your culture has gone far and wide across the world. 
I am so curious and looking forward to the progress. What you will create and bring into life. Yeah, that's that's good. And me too. <laughs> uh, I have an idea here. And I think you can see kind of where it's going. Um, but I am very curious how, how this landscape is going to be. Because I think it would be nice with a really huge landscape. And maybe, maybe I can do that uh, right now. To have some far off distant mountains in the background here. I think that might be nice to get some some more depth into it. And the blue is just um, the further away something is, the bluer it gets almost. It's just the atmosphere. Hello from the UK. You're very talented, Tracy says. Thank you. I am very much appreciated. So yeah, let's just have some far, far off mountains here. And I think I'm going to have to start dinner soon. So I'm going to upload this to YouTube, but my phone, it takes me about a day or more for that to happen. So it will be available tomorrow, I think. Uh, it can be hard with bad teachers. I'm so glad indeed we have access to real inspirations like Joachim and Lena. Thank you. That is very nice. It's funny because I really enjoy watching foreign production with subtitles. <laughs> yes, from Senpai about the Britishness being everywhere. Well, that is good. It's good to broaden your horizons like that. And that can be especially tricky if you're from the States or from England, just because so much is from there. So there, we have some mountains being far, far off. We'll do a bit more of those over here. And we can just uh, deepen the landscape a bit. So I always like that in landscapes when you just get this feeling of things being, of it being a very deep landscape and you can just watch for miles. Hi, Instagram uh, IG freak. You are very welcome to join us. I am sad to say that I am about finished here with this stream, but it is going to be put on YouTube. Um, yeah, so it was probably, could have been better for a lot of people if I did this in the evening, but I just uh, wanted to do it, and so it came at this time instead, and that's just how it's going to be a bit with these live streams, is that uh, I sometimes just get the urge to do one, and that's going to be the time. I... Senpai says, I don't like how other countries end up learning English, but the only language is taught in school in the UK is French, Spanish, or German. Yeah, that, and of course it's difficult to learn them and everything is uh, in, in English. I know that's the reason why Norwegians speak uh, English quite well. It's just because all of the movies that we see are in English and they're not synchronized. And that really helps. So I can imagine how it is being from the UK and um, not really being exposed to other languages much. All right, I think uh, I will. I will stop there, and uh, that's going to do it for today. And I'm so glad that you all joined, and um, I'll keep this painting for another live stream so that you guys can follow the progress progression. And um, yeah, we actually came quite far. And that really shows it, that it is possible to do a landscape painting from scratch on a live stream. So I'm going to wash my brushes again here and give you guys time to say your goodbyes and so on. I like that the last time. So I'm just not going to stop everything right away. Wonderful painting so far, Cressy. Thank you, Cressy. Looking forward to tuning in again soon, Senpai says. Thank you, Senpai. I am looking forward to seeing you here for the next live stream, where we can uh, finish up this painting, I think. Bye for now. Bye to you too, Tracy. Thanks to all of you for the nice time 
I hope we'll meet again in the dunes. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you for the idea. It was lovely like always, Rahel says. Have a good evening, everyone, and have a delicious dinner, Joachim. Thank you. I will think about all of the different food ideas. <laughs> All right then, I'm almost through my brushes here. And yeah, and at some point, maybe we'll do a big landscape painting, but I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna film that. So these small ones, I'm probably gonna have to do it for now. All right then, goodbye to you all, and see you next time.